What's going on guys? This is Captain Jack and you are watching a Minecrafters tutorial. This one is about compact machines and it is a super awesome mod. Alright, now this mod really doesn't have a lot of items. There's basically 11 craftable items here. This one's not craftable. Um, but what you can do with this mod is absolutely amazing. Um, and when I first learned about it, it blew my mind and basically I went straight to my computer and started building this tutorial. Alright, so in the first part of the video, I'm basically going to show you um, how to make all this stuff, how to craft it. It's got a unique little crafting system. And in the back half of the video, I'm going to um, give you some practical applications that you can apply to um, your base in-game. And also maybe you can think of some awesome things that you can do with this mod all on your own. All right, so the first thing you're going to need is a personal shrinking device. Once you have one of those, uh, make a few more and uh, craft four of these miniaturization field projectors. And that's what's going to provide the space that we can make all of our blocks in. Next, you're going to want to go ahead and place these down. And when you place the first one and then right click on it, it's going to give you other options for other placement for these. So I can place one here or I can place one here. And it actually goes far beyond this wall. And I'll show you that in just one second. And then you're done. So these two are across from each other. Now you're going to need two more. And if you click this, it's going to give you the other two options. Now, uh, these are the only two viable options because it needs to be um, symmetrical here. So place one of these here and one of these here. And when you place them correctly, it forms this little beamy block thing here. Awesome. The smallest possible configuration for the field projectors is this small. However, um, you can't actually craft anything with it because none of the recipes fit and uh, you run into another problem, which uh, we'll talk about later. All right, so before we move on, if you go ahead and right-click the air with your personal shrinking device, it has a little bit of a computer here, and you can go in and you can look at stuff, and it's all very informative and nice, um, but it's absolutely not informative enough. Um, I hope the uh, little book here gets updated a little bit to make things a little bit more specific, um, but it does refer you to um, JEI to check recipes. Um, so, for instance, if you want to make a, let's make a tiny compact machine, if we go ahead and check the recipe, it's not, this is not very self-explanatory, okay? What you need is 26 of these uh, compact machine walls, and this is what you get from it, and this is what you need to throw at it to construct the multi-block, and these are the dimensions of the multi-block. Um, but first, we need to make these compact machine walls, and they are crafted with a block of iron, a piece of redstone, um, and this will give us, this, so this is the recipe output over here, um, 16 compact machine walls, and this is the thing that you have to throw at it, which is very non, it's just does, it's not explained well. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to get this, we're going to block of iron. Uh, I could have put it right there, actually. I'm going to put this here, and then I'm going to throw a piece of redstone in it. And when you throw the piece of redstone in it, it it's going to turn into 16 of these, okay? And the field comes back, and we have some compact machine walls. Before we move on, I want to show you the recipes for the tunnels. Don't worry, we'll talk about them in a second. So the redstone tunnel is made with a block of redstone, one compact machine wall, and eight redstone. So we're going to head and go ahead and put that down, surround it by redstone, and then put that there. And then we are going to throw a piece of redstone into the block, and that's going to make the redstone tunnel. The regular tunnel is made by placing a hopper on top of a compact machine wall, surround it by redstone, and throw a redstone at it. So there we go. We get some tunnels. And so we're going to do this. We're going to get some hoppers. Put that on top. Surround it, surround it, surround it, surround it, surround it. And then toss a piece of redstone in it. And we will have made our second type of tunnels. And these are regular tunnels. Um, all right, now the rest of the compact machines. Um, 26 of these plus a block of iron will make a small compact machine. And this is one of the other times where it's not very self-explanatory. Um, the block of iron or whatever other material that you'll need later on. So for instance, the diamond. Um, the diamond block has to go in the dead center of this multi-block. Um, nobody tells you that. you got to figure it out on your own. Same thing with the um, block of emerald here. Um, so let's say I go to make a 3x3 three three block just like this. And this is the recipe for the most basic, like that. And I have it crafted, and I did the recipe right, and I throw a piece of redstone on it. Nothing happens. And that's because, and this is what I, what I was referring to when I said I'll talk about it later, um, you actually have to have space inside of the um, orange area, the beaming area, for the redstone to pass through and hit the block. It like does not work. So we need to build um, the projectors just a little bit bigger. And before I move on again, you can put um, a redstone signal on the projectors to uh, turn off that little beam there. All right, so this is the maximum size projection area that you can have. And that block in the middle represents um, the amount of space that you have to work with once the lasers are configured. So if I go ahead and click this, it's gonna tell me that that is the only available option um, over there to put something. 
But what if I don't have any of these? Let me show you how many arrows actually come up. So I'm going to place this, I'm going to hit this, and you see that all of these possible spots are uh, places that I can put this here. So I'm going to put that there, and then I'm going to click this one, and then it's going to give me these two spaces over here. So these are the only available options. And uh, you don't, they're not in increments of like where those arrows just appeared. You can be a little bit more um, creative with them, um, which is what this is over here. So I have various different sizes. I have the max size, um, and it's actually, you can only go every other one. Um, otherwise, it's like odd in the middle there. So this is the configuration for all of the different blocks or boxes. Um, they're not all shown there because some of the holograms aren't actually working. Um, but you can see down to like the smallest area box is in the bottom there. And you have the biggest area box um, is in the top. And uh, you can turn all these on and off with the redstone signal. All right, just to give you one more quick example, the largest um, size box here, the maximum compact machine, is uh, 98 compact machine walls, a block of emerald, and I have to throw an ender pearl at it. So I'm going to go ahead and grab an ender pearl. Um, there are two different like uh, tiers of these machines. So the first tier um, is all three by threes. So if I check these, all the recipes are three by three. So that's for um, the tiny one, the small one, and the normal one. And when I get into large, giant, and maximum, they become five by fives. Okay, so the maximum size you ever have to build is a five by five. Don't think you have to build this huge thing. Oops, that's not going to do anything. Okay, so like I said before, you need to put the emerald block in the dead center of this in order to make it work. Otherwise, it absolutely will not craft. So that's really important. Um, some people are going to wonder why their machine isn't crafting. Okay, and when you throw it in the middle there, it's going to take a little while and it's going to shrink down and it's going to make that. Um, maximum compact machine for us. All right, and boop, there it is. And my field comes back, and I have my maximum compact machine. Awesome. All right, so so far, I really haven't given you a reason to be super excited about this mod, because you still basically have no freaking clue what's going on. Well, I'm about to show you how absolutely incredible this is. Basically, this compact machine represents a space. And uh, every time that you go inside of one of these machines, yes, you can go inside of them, it will create a dimension. So I cannot speak to how potentially devastating this would be to servers. Um, you're going to have to figure that out all on your own. Uh, but every one of these machines that you make and go inside of, as soon as you go into it, it's going to make a dimension. So we're going to get our personal shrinking device here, and we're going to right-click. And when you right-click, it creates a space inside of here. So that's when it creates the dimension. And here we are. We are inside of that box. Now, we can't see out of it. This is just all we have to work with here. We have a 3x3 three three space inside. Um, and this is the smallest machine. So this is fantastic. Now, what can you do inside of this machine? Well, I can go ahead and put down a redstone lamp. Uh, maybe three. Awesome. Um, one thing I do want to do before I leave this machine is I want to set my entry point. So if you shift, right click, you will set an entry point and you want to make that entry point somewhere where the, there will not be any blocks in your way when you go to warp in. Otherwise, you'll have to break them. To get out of your box or your little dimension here, you right click and it will bring you back to the overworld and you will be able to see what's inside of your machine. So if I go ahead and get an empty pan and look inside of here, bam, this is fantastic. This is so awesome. Okay, so I have a little um, stack of redstone lamps in here, but that's not even the awesomest part. Okay, uh, what I can also do is um, I can pipe power and items and even redstone signals inside of this box to power things inside of here. So let's say I want to put a redstone furnace in here, okay? And I want to get power in here, and I want to get power in from the outside. That's what the tunnel is for. So this orange one here will transmit items or power. If I go ahead and put that on there, I can change which direction it's facing, and you can see that in the top of my screen there. Right now it's facing down. If I click, click it again, it's going to go up. And if I keep clicking, it's going to check all the sides off and eventually disappear. And I'll get it back. So I'm going to put this on here, and I'm going to say let's, let's face it up, okay? Or, or let's face it north. Um, I'm also going to put, um, let's say, this down here, and I'm going to put this one facing up, okay? And I put a, this is a redstone tunnel, okay? You can see the difference. There's a little piece of redstone there. I'm going to put my lamp there, and then I'm going to put a piece of cryo-stabilized flux duct. And you can see that now this connected to that thing. Oh, this is so awesome. Uh, but if I put it anywhere else, it doesn't connect it to an actual wall. So um, I need to move my spawn point because I just put a l redstone lamp there. Now I'm going to go back. And then I am going to look and see um, in what's going on inside my box here. Okay, so there we go. Got that going on. Um, I think I did the north side. 
right? That's facing there. You see, it doesn't connect, but now it recognizes that I have my tunnel there and there's power going into it. So I'm going to put a capacitor here and my machine's going to have power inside of there. If I go ahead and put a um, redstone signal on the top, even though this is on the bottom, it, it doesn't matter. And click that on. Bam! My light is on. This is so awesome. So awesome. Some of you, uh, your gears are already turning about what you can do with this thing. But I'm gonna about to lay down some uh, some ideas to get your brain started. Um, one thing you can't do is you can't put like another one on the wall um, because you can only have one. Um, you can only interact like with one thing at a time per facing. So this whole side um, is already taken up by one thing, despite the fact that I can put a whole bunch of different things here. It doesn't matter. Um, so you can only put one tunnel per side, um, but you can use all six sides. So you can see that this machine has full power. It's being piped right in there. And uh, holy crap, this is so awesome. This is so awesome. Turn up the awesome. All right, so here's a little example of the machine I set up. This would be uh, like an auto ore processing box here. So you could have a whole bunch of different machines um, pulverizing and then smelting a whole bunch of different ores all in one box and have all the contents being piped out on the other end. Um, so this is a uh, messed up graphic. I don't know why, but it's a um, redstone furnace and I have items coming in this side into the furnace. I already have power in there. This is just an example. And then I have items going out this side and then I also have a redstone signal underneath there. And the redstone signal is hooked up to the top. So I transmit a redstone signal through and it automatically brings um, iron ore in, goes into my box, gets processed and gets sucked out the other side. Fantastic. And uh, you can also break these um, and your all your content stays. Um, I'm in creative mode, so it would say actually machine like number five. It, it numbers every machine so you don't like mis misplace your stuff there. Um, it keeps making a duplicate for me. But yeah, don't worry about breaking these. You can move them around. Um, take them all over the place. All right, so basically the limit of this mod is your creativity. And I am going to, like I've said about three times now, um, get you jump started here. Um, this is an example of an AE2 controller. This is a very advanced controller um, linked up with a whole bunch of P2P tunnels. Um, this is something that you could um, build and uh, you could have your whole controller system inside one of these blocks and uh, you'd have to pump it out with a uh, um, quantum link chamber, um, but you could put all your storage in here. Um, so this is a really neat neat use of that, maybe to put your AE2 controller in. We're not going to go into the rest of them here. Um, here's an example of a tree farm. Everybody knows tree farms freaking suck. They're noisy. They take up a lot of space. But if I just go ahead and flick this on, my tree farm is going to harvest <laughs> a whole bunch of different trees. You can see the redstone signal there on the bottom is uh, lighting up my tree farm. That was just a little uh, crappy way to set it up so that you could tell. So my uh, redstone's coming here and my items are coming out through here. So that's pretty cool. So this is harvesting um, trees inside of this little box here. Um, you can put your compact machine maker inside of one of these. I guess it's kind of st stupid use for it, but uh, whatever. Uh, this is a singularity bomb machine that I made. So this makes singularities from the AE2 mod. Um, also, plug for us. Check out the AE2 tutorial series if you want. Links are in the description. If you want to see how to work AE2, if that controller looked really cool. Um, moving on. Um, so yeah, this, uh, this is a singularity machine, and I actually have... Um, have it so that it's set up to autocraft singularity. So if I go ahead and autocraft the singularity, what it's going to do is it's going to drop the singularity. It's going to drop TNT. You see it there? You see the redstone dust? Boom! Singularity comes through. Okay, so these are like, these can be kind of uh, an eyesore on your base. Um, so if you want to do a little TNT explosion setup in your base to make singularities, you can do that. Um, this is wishful thinking. This absolutely does not work, but it would be so awesome if it did. You can actually fit an entire tier six environmental tech um, void miner inside of one of these. Uh, but you can see that um, since there is no bedrock in the little dimensions that it actually will not work. So this would be awesome if it worked. Uh, maybe you have a block in your mod pack that you're playing um, that's a bedrock replacement block that will make one of these think it's bedrock. If you do, that would be awesome. Imagine having that whole thing. Imagine having your whole ore mining set up inside one box in your base being pumped directly into your AE. Doesn't get any better than that. Um, here's some uh, immersive engineering multi-blocks, and I didn't build any of the big ones because I was too lazy. Um, but sometimes these can be cumbersome. Sometimes the coke ovens can be ugly, 
and you don't want them uh, clogging up your base, so throw them inside of this box, pipe all your junk in there. Um, you can you can fit a Draconic Evolution uh, Energy Core inside of here. These are super awesome uh, multi-block energy storage uh, blocks, and you can check out our tutorial on that. Um, great place to put an IC2 nuke if you really want to be super safe. I mean, come on. Uh, this doesn't actually recognize um, IC2 cables, which is a little bit of a bummer, but nobody really likes IC2 anymore, despite the fact that I kind of like it. Um, put your smeltery in here. I hate smelteries. They're ugly. They're cumbersome. They're big. Um, they take up a lot of space. So you can jam. Uh, <laughs> you can jam a smeltery inside of here. This does not work. Okay, like I said before, um, I was trying to like slap an interface onto the side of here um, so that it would like recognize the contents of something else inside of this box, but it actually doesn't work at all. So you can't do that one. And then this is kind of cool. This I have a compact machine inside of a compact machine, and if I go inside of my compact machine. And then I can go back into another compact machine, and voila. And you can like keep going deeper and deeper into your compact machine, so you can have machines on machines on machines. And uh, when you right-click the wall, it brings you back to the previous compact machine. And when you right-click again, it brings you back to the overworld. So that's all I got for you guys. Um, I hope you, <laughs> you like uh, this mod and the implications of it that it can uh, provide for your base. Um, I know this um, is kind of uh, met with a little bit of resistance on, on the one hand where people like big sprawling massive bases and they like um, all of their machines and stuff to be visible and everything so this might not appeal so much to that crowd um, but to the crowd that wants to get a lot of stuff done in a really small amount of space compact machines is a fantastic mod highly recommend it thank you for watching guys if you're looking for more info um, about this video go ahead and check out the description uh, below there for mod pack version for mod version um, check out our discord channel we're sometimes hanging out in there ingram's hanging out in there more than i am um, live chat with us enjoy everything get ready for more videos guys and as always stay poised